Hey, hey, what's up everybody? Kai here, and welcome to my latest Let's Play series, which I will be conducting alongside my current Let's Play series of Breath of Fire. That's right, I'm taking on two LPs at once. <clears throat> and no, you are not mistaken, this is indeed another Let's Play of Final Fantasy VI, whose title screen is as ominous as ever. Got the music, the stormy clouds in the background, the fiery letters and all that. Good job, Squaresoft. Way to build the anticipation. As many of you are already aware of, this is not the first time I have done an LP for this game. But even with that thought in mind, I would like to ask that nobody spoil anything down below in the comment section. For anybody who might be playing through or watching or experiencing this game for their first time. That should go without saying, but just in case, I wanted to go ahead and throw that little disclaimer out there. But without further ado, let's start a new game. And like every good RPG of the day, if you start a new game, you get treated to an introduction, where you get a little bit of backstory to the game. Yeah, no longer did you have to resort to the instruction manual. What a concept, right? Final Fantasy VI, as you can see here, is the first game in the series to break away from the traditional medieval fantasy setting and starts taking its first steps towards the steampunk or industrial setting. It's not full-blown like in Final Fantasy VII, but you can tell that's the direction that they were heading with this game here. Hmm? Who was that guy? Well, I wouldn't worry about him. He's probably not important at all. But yeah, this game is the perfect blend between medieval and steampunk. I think it works really well. Well, as they said in Battlestar Galactica, this has all happened before, and this will all happen again. Reminds me of that one scene from Chrono Trigger. Hmm. Looks like we have some soldiers here, and a mysterious girl. Soldier A is named Vix, and Soldier B is named Wedge. Yeah, Star Wars reference, Biggs and Wedge. If she's a female, wouldn't that be sorceress? Now, I'm no linguist, but as far as I know... Whoa! 50! Wait a minute, she's a green-haired sorceress. Rydia, is that you? We haven't seen you in, what, two Final Fantasies? Ah, Slave Crown. Well, that's kind of a dick move. Wait a minute, wait a minute. So our first mission in the game is to travel to a snow-capped village and look for an esper. That sounds very familiar for some reason. Almost as if I've done that in another RPG. Then again, maybe that's just my imagination. Nice Mode 7 graphics here, by the way. Back then, viewers, this was cutting-edge technology. And the music that's playing in the background is probably one of my most beloved tunes in video games, period. Um, this is called Terra's Theme, and along with the entirety of the soundtrack, was composed by Nobuo Uematsu, as you just saw his name at the top of the screen there. He is a brilliant and gifted composer, and he just, he did a phenomenal job on this soundtrack. And I find it funny that this is probably my favorite Final Fantasy soundtrack, because in an interview he once said that this too was his own personal favorite soundtrack out of all the Final Fantasy soundtracks that he's worked on. Also, for the purpose of this LP, I will once again be playing the original Super Nintendo version of the game. However, if you'd like to follow along on the Game Boy Advance version, 
or the iPhone and Android and whatever other else mobile device you might have version, you can. Everything I show you in this LP will apply to those versions as well, with one exception. And that exception is the bonus dungeons that they added to the newer versions of this game. I will, however, go over the new espers that were added and point you in the right direction to acquiring them. You can also play along on the PlayStation 1 version of the game, as it is identical to this one, with the added bonus of load times and lag. How thoughtful, Squaresoft. Oh, Ted Woolsey. Best translator ever! What do you mean you don't believe me? <laughs> okay, but like I said, this is not the first time I've done an LP for this game, and as such, it's going to be a little bit different. And I'll go over that in more detail um, a little bit later on, maybe in the next episode. But this playthrough of the game, well, you know what? Let's just get it, everything done and out of the way right now. This playthrough of the game is going to be done with no Magisite. If you don't know what Magisite is, think of Materia before they called it Materia. And if you don't know what Materia is, well, you'll just have to wait and see. Um, those of you who are familiar with it, you can look forward to me not using Magisite to summon espers in battle. I will not be using Magisite to learn spells, although there are other ways of learning magic in this game, and I'll go over those as they become pertinent. And I will also not be using Espers or Magisite to boost my stats upon gaining levels. Because as you saw in my last LP, with a little bit of knowledge, it is very easy to break this game beyond all reason. Now if you are interested in seeing how that can be done, uh, I encourage you to check out my other LP of this game, in which I put Espers to full use. And throughout the course of this particular playthrough, I'll give you hints and tips just in case you decide that you don't want to follow my rule set. And because I'm playing this challenge mode, as it were, some characters are going to be much more useful than they were in my last LP, such as a certain feral individual, if you know who I'm talking about. And on the flip side, some characters are going to be damn near useless, such as a certain artistic little girl if you know who I'm referring to, once again. But enough of that. Let's get on with this game. Which will play out pretty much in the same manner as it did last time in the early stages with only a few minor differences. And the real changes won't come into play until we actually get access to Magisite and find out what that is exactly and all that good stuff. So for now, um, let's press the X button to open up our main menu here. Off to the left you see your party members, we have our mysterious girl, and Wedge and Vix. Off to the right you have your sub-commands. Item goes to your item screen. If we had any items you would see a little description in that box just above the arrow there. If you press the B button to cancel, you can arrange them, you can look at your key items, which we have a pendant, and there's that description I was just talking about. See, skills allows you to see the skills um, that each character has access to. For right now, we only have magic, which is her special ability. And it's really hard not to spoil her name. <laughs> but she has cure magic and fire magic. These are both your basic level 1 versions of each spell. And that's pretty much it for right now. Espers, we don't have any. The equipment goes to your equipment menu. Pretty standard stuff. You got your stats on the lower right, what you're equipped with up top. And the neat thing about this game, well, I can't show you now, but um, you can press the L or R buttons to cycle through your characters from the equipment screen. Yeah, that would have been nice to have back in Final Fantasy IV. What else do we have? Oh, yeah, if you press the equip command once, not pick. Uh, select, I should say. If you select Equip and then press Left, you'll notice that you can target your entire party at once. Press the A button and you can see what everybody is wearing all at once. So that's pretty handy. I really like that feature. Relics, those are your accessories of the game, and again, we don't have any right now, but each character can equip two accessories. Status screen, um, I'll go over this in more detail when we have more party members. 
that have a different variety of stats and specialties, but essentially this is your basic status command, or status screen, that's present in every RPG ever conceived. And your config menu, this is where you can change all of the different features in the game, such as your battle mode, which you'll go to active, battle speed, you have to speed that up, message speed, speed that up. Uh, this will change how your commands show up in your window, it's really weird. Um, I'm just going to leave it on your window setting because that's just your basic list. If you change it to short, it makes the commands in battle kind of like a cross formation. It's really weird. Um, stereo sound, memory cursor. If you watch my Fantasy Star 4 LP, you know that I am not a fan of memory cursors. <laughs> so we're going to keep it on this, the default, because well, I'm a default kind of guy. Uh, this re-equip option here, this means that your characters will automatically be equipped with the, well, what the computer AI deems the optimum equipment. And I'll just keep that on the default, but whatever. It's essentially the equipment wizard from Star Ocean 2, if you've ever played that game. The controller setting here, this is a really unique feature because if you set it to multiple, you can actually play this game with a friend and make it a two-player RPG. And down here, you got some more miscellaneous options like the order that your spells will show up on the list. Again, I just stick with the default of white magic, black magic, support magic, whatever. Here you can change your window color. You have some presets. Oh, again, reminds me of Chrono Trigger. What the? Oh, you crazy Japanese. Or, if you want to go balls to the wall, you can customize your window color however you see fit. By changing the red, green, and blue values for the window, the font, the window border, everything. <sighs> yeah. That's a lot of information, but now we don't have to do that later. So, the only way we can go is where the game dictates us to go, which is straight up. You're gonna send a dog to fight against a mobile suit? Haven't you ever seen Gundam? So really, this is your typical newbie dungeon. There's no strategy, everything dies in one hit. It poses absolutely no challenge whatsoever. It's just here to kind of get you familiar with the battle commands and how they work and all that good stuff. So inside of these Magitech suits, we have access to the Magitech command. And as you can see, our mysterious curl has access to a lot more abilities than Vix and Wedge do. And that will be explained later on. But essentially you can pick whatever you want to go with and it will destroy everything here. <laughs> but if you really want to know, uh, soldiers are weak to poison as are a lot of the humanoid enemies in this game, now that I think about it. And everything else is weak to fire. When in doubt, kill it with fire, am I right? But uh, let's show off uh, some of these other abilities, like Transfer. This is a instant death attack. And instant death attacks will be very useful in this game, believe it or not. It's not like every other RPG where they're damn near useless. I take that back, Fantasy Star 4 um, is an exception. Instant death attacks were very useful there. And let's go with Ice Beam. Why not? Oh, Heal Force, by the way, is a heal, which is pretty cool because it'll it'll heal your, your party member for no cost. Again, this place is so easy that it's not really relevant, but it's there. Yeah, take a missile to the face! Fix and Wedge gained another level. One thing you could do here is you could kill off Vix and Wedge. That way the mysterious girl will get more experience, but I don't think that's really necessary. Now new to the series are pincer attacks, like this. It's where you're surrounded by the enemy on both sides and your characters will take double damage from physical attacks. It's pretty dangerous. We also have access to her magic command. Uh, 
should you decide to use that, you can. But again, just go with any of the Magitek abilities and you'll be fine. And Mysterious Girl gained a level and we got a Tonic, alright. Let's restore 50 HP to a single character. So let's keep heading up north here. Well, don't mind us, we're just walking through the town on mobile suits, destroying everything in our path. Alright, new enemies, Wooly Mammoths. Alright, those guys are weak to fire again. However, because there's so many, I'm just going to go with the Bio Blast. Kill everything at once. Ow, quit it. Ow, quit it. Psychedelic! Wow, Vix and Wedge are gaining levels like mad. What level is the Mysterious Girl anyways? Level 4. Oh, okay. You'd think she'd be a higher level if she killed 50 of their soldiers. Oh, looks like we're getting close. What is an Esper anyways? Hmm. Well, according to Star Trek, it's anybody that has the ability to use ESP. More new enemies, were rats. Again, they are weak to fire. And we should probably heal our party so we don't die. That would be embarrassing. Although I did die in the movie dungeon to Fantasy Star 4 when I was playing a modded version of the game. Oh man. Yeah, if you thought Universe Mode was hard in Star Ocean games, you haven't seen anything yet. And off to the left here, we have our first save point. Uh, no, I think I'm okay. This is where you save your game from your menu. You can also save your game on the world map whenever we get there. Um, just like in other Final Fantasies, um, at save points down there you can also use tents and sleeping bags to fully restore your party, or individual party members, depending. This is pretty cool, starting the game off as the bad guys. It's a nice change. Oh, as if that's a surprise. Empires are always evil in JRPGs. It's a standard rule. Hmm? Well, what are you gonna do? Welk. The hell is a Welk? And can our mysterious girl defeat the Welk with the help of her Imperial Entourage and locate that Esper? You guys will just have to find out next time. But until then, as always, thank you for watching, and I hope you have a good day. Take care.